Hello everyone, this is Diane. I am working on this junk journal this morning and I'm going to be making some embellishments. I did make a couple. I made these tags. These are the larger tags. Um, uh, about six and a quarter by three and a quarter or something like that. So these printables are from Studio 28E's um, Vintage Flower Children kit. And so I just used an image on each tag and then some scraps of fabric and lace and then I, I have some floral vintage stamps. So I put them on. So that's what I'm going to be working on today. I don't need that one. I distressed the edges. I used um, the more yellow one, honey something maybe, and then a little bit of green, but it doesn't show up much when you put all the things on anyway. Oh, here's the other thing I was working on, just some little fabric cluster things. So, and um, here's an example of what I did with one of them that I made, just to embellish a page. So we're gonna be working on some of those today too. So, I have two more tags and two more images. So I think first I'll go through and pick out some stamps that the colors match. I'm not trying to match the flower, just the colors, but this one is a rose and I did find a couple of rose stamps. But these, I just match the color. And it, um, how I arrange everything will determine what um, size stamp I need, too. Aren't they pretty? This one is pretty much just green, so I can use a variety of colors. I'll just have to, maybe it'll depend on um, what fabrics and things I choose. Or maybe the fabrics will depend on the stamps. Got mushrooms. I hope I'm in view here. Okay, that's probably enough. I just pick out ones that match and then go with whatever works with what I'm with what I'm doing. I will set these aside and put them all away later. Okay, so let's start with this one. I'll just take some little pieces of fabric and lace. And just start playing. I love this. It's vintage. It was removed from something. You can see the little holes where the stitches were. This is a vintage lace, too, a uh, trim. It's not really a lace. Uh, 
Okay, um, I think I'll look for some muslin. There we go, some coffee dyed muslin. And there's a button, this is a paper button that is part of this digital kit. And I had two of them, I hope I still have them. There they are. I think that looks good enough. So I will glue the stamps and the button on after I sew the other items on. It makes it so there's a lot of stitching on the back, but there's room to write inside the stitching. There's a lot more on this one. But you can write little things in there. <clears throat> so I'm going to start sewing. And hope I remember where to put those stamps. Those are the stamps I need. Someone asked me where I got this, what I put under my sewing machine that makes it slide so easily. It's a mat, which has a lot of things collected on it here. It's a mat that you're supposed to put your coffee pot on. I just got it at Walmart in the aisle where they sell coffee pots. I got it several years ago. I got one for my husband's coffee pot and then I put it under my, I got another one and put it under my um, KitchenAid mixer because that's heavy to move back and forth. And then uh, after my husband passed away and I don't, I don't drink coffee so I just took the, took his and brought it up here. But they're not expensive. Just thought I'd share since some people have asked. I should glue these, but I'm not going to. I didn't before, so I'm not going to now. I just stitched around the perimeter of the card to begin with and then I'll see what else I want to stitch down. I think I'll just stitch this because you're going to be putting this in a pocket and it'll keep catching that loose piece.
So it looks like this piece of trim kind of eked its way out there, but that's okay. I don't know. I think the rest of it is okay, being a little bit loose, flopsy. So um, I'll add a, some sort of a fiber there, eventually. Let's move on to this one. I hope you don't mind doing two before we do the... Oh yeah, I'm going to have to glue those on, but I'll do that later. So this one has pink. Obviously, so let's see what fabrics we have. Isn't this one pretty? I just have a little piece of that left. Mm, I've got a little pink lace here. The main colors I'm using in this journal are green and yellow because those are the main colors on the cover, but the, the flowers on the images are very multicolored, obviously, because flowers are. So it will be full of different colors. There's a little snippet of this here. Can't let that go to waste. This is one of the fabrics that I got at the quilt shop when I went with my friend. It was the little, let's see, the bigger ones are the charm packs. I forgot what they called these. It's just a stack of Moda fabrics that are really pretty. something down there. This is a piece of a vintage sheet. This brightly colored 1970s sheet. <clears throat> I have a piece of this old curtain. Don't think I want that. I'm going to look for a Rim. Actually, I have this right here. I wonder how that would look. Got a stack of trims here. So let's see how some stamps look. Boy, that piece just wants to curl. don't really like that.
So I had my Christmas with my sisters and my parents yesterday. There's too many of us to get together at one person's house, even though we all live fairly close. Um, there's just too many of us. So we just kind of do Christmas with our own branch of the family, but... <clears throat> My sisters sing, they sing beautifully, and I play the piano, so that's our Christmas, one of our Christmas traditions is to sing around the piano at Christmas time, so my parents live in a apartment building for older folks, and they have a common room with a piano. It's a small building, it's only one story, so it's not like hundreds of people. I don't even know how many apartments there are, but it's not huge. The common room is small, but when we're coming to do music, that room is packed. <laughs> they love it. They're all, they're all there waiting when we get there. So we did that yesterday. We went and did some Christmas music, and they sang along with us. Another of our Christmas traditions is to have popovers on Christmas morning for breakfast. So, and my dad loves popovers. So that's what we decided we were going to do. We're gonna <clears throat> do the music and then make supper for them in their apartment, but we brought all the ingredients. We did the cooking and we did the cleaning up. So we made popovers and scrambled eggs and bacon and it was, and fruit salad, and it was delicious. And they were so appreciative, and we had a good time. And then we exchanged our gifts. So <clears throat> the couple of the journals that I made that were gifts were for my sisters. I have a sister named Annette. So... green got a little bit wrinkled up there. Yeah, it just folded over, but that's fine. I am not going to fix it. So I found a journal, a book about, you know, it's fiction, but it featured Annette Funicello as kind of like a Nancy Drew character, I think. I think it looked like a mystery. I didn't read it. <clears throat> but of course, it's, you know, not a true story. It's just a fictional story featuring Annette Funicello. <clears throat> so it had the word Annette on the front in big letters. So I made my sister Annette a journal with that book. And then my other sister got the shabby chic, one of the shabby chic Christmas, uh, prayer journals that I made. And they loved them. So we had a good, good time with sisters and parents. And then I will glue these on. I'll figure it out. Where are we on time? I can't see from this. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and make <clears throat> some clusters. I've got this little tin here of scraps. Little scraps. Let's see what we can find in here. I'm actually making two journals. One is using the cover that I showed you, Perot's Garden, and the other one is a Rand McNally book. 
and it's called The Children Who Lived in a Shoe. So the Perot's Garden one, like I said, will, will be more um, yellow and green. And uh, Children Who Lived in a Shoe will be yellow and blue featured. But lots of colors because they have the flower children in both. Oh yes, VTAC fabric. There's a piece of a crocheted doily. Some of this stuff I want to make snippets with. Let's use a piece of this since it's just hanging out in there. I'll add some interesting texture. Just a cut off, <clears throat> a cut off piece of blanket binding. That looks good. So all I did was arrange these, and then I stitched down the center both ways. You could glue them. Sorry about my voice. I don't know. He does this sometimes. <laughs> just goes away. Finish this one. I think. Let's see, I had three, and I need six. So this one will make five, but I don't need to make all six of them with you watching. I'll just do one more. Sorry for the reach. I've got these pieces of my lace that's in my shop. I only have what colors are left. There's two of the coffee colored ones and maybe three of the coffee and there's two of one other but I can't remember which color. So those laces sold really well. Thank you very much. Maybe after the new year, I'll have to get some more and try some other colors, too. I think that'll be good for this one.
Okay, that'll do it for this video, and I'm going to make my sixth cluster, and then I'm going to come back and show you what else I worked on yesterday that had absolutely nothing to do with the journals that I'm making, but they will be used in future journals, so stay tuned for that. Bye-bye.